But I thought this is the type of thing that I, that I envy in other actors, that they get to do these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. There's things I'm actually proud uh, that, that I would say, oh, I was in that. Whereas there's a lot of stuff I do where I wouldn't tell anyone I was in it. Yeah. You know, I asked you in 1998 when we were working on Steal This Movie. Steal This Movie, Abby. What your yes. favorite thing that you had done was. And you, you said The Matchmaker. Oh, oh, it was, it, for, well, there's favorite that, things that I'm proud of and then yeah. favorite things that were just these great experiences. Yeah. Um, not that I dislike the matchmaker, but I'm saying the experience, the experience was so wonderful in living in Ireland. Just like What Hot American Summer, we lived at the summer camp. Uh, and it's one of the best memories I have of doing anything. And then there's things I'm proud of, like when I was on the West Wing or working at Air America or Ratatouille. Look, how many books have you read? Eleven D billion. No, so, I don't, I don't, nine. So you're, I don't know. Do, would you say you're 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 self-educated? Um, no, I, I, I don't know. I because I'm not I'm not particularly well educated. Uh, like I I am intellectually curious, and as I've gotten older, I have become a much more voracious reader. I was always a, a pretty good reader. Yeah. But I I would I, I read a lot, and uh, and when you say that, sometimes it makes you sound like a dick. Uh, I, lo I love to read. But I, I genuinely do, and I spend an enormous amount of time doing it because I have the luxury of doing that because I don't have children and stuff. And because my career sort of started tanking around 2002. Do you reread books? I do. How, how, how many times will you reread a book before uh, you finish with it? I have reread Jude the Obscure a number of times. I love it. I have also reread a lot of Jane Austen. Uh, I just, I, it just comforts me. I just like it. I've uh, reread. Uh, when I was a kid, I would reread James and the Giant Peach all the time. And uh, what, what what has made you return to these books? Well, so it's uh, something comforting about it. It's like when you rewatch movies that you you know. I could watch mm -hmm. Crimes and Misdemeanors by Woody Allen eight hundred million times. Hannah and Her Sisters. Um, other uh, there's uh, movies that that I go to that I enjoy rewatching in the same way with some books. But I think Pride and Prejudice is more about when I'm in turmoil or an anxious um, or. or something is bothering me, I, I will go to it. I don't always finish it every time. Hmm. Um, but also, I, to, be, to be quite honest, I, I am guilty, like some people are, of self-flagellation. Like I say terrible things about myself to myself in my head. And it usually starts in the morning if I'm laying in bed. As soon as I'm awake, if I lay there too long, I really uh, am, say terrible things to myself and then also replay humiliating episodes in my mind that will go back to the 60s, like the late 60s. I don't know why, it's a, it's a self-indulgent and, and wa waste of time, but I have to get up and start reading to get out of it. So sometimes I'll grab something familiar, but uh, I always have books around the apartment, you know I mean, ready to go. I don't, I simultaneously read things. Just wondering where, where, where we should take the conversation, whether you would mind like talking about stuff like, you know, drinking and things like that. We could. I know you used to enjoy a cocktail or other things. Yeah, I, I, and I, 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 I do. I still do. So you're lucky. I, I'm not allowed to anymore. Not allowed at all. Not allowed. Uh, not allowed to drink anymore. Do you miss it? Yeah, sometimes. I miss the camaraderie. Sometimes I miss the... Um, when people late night are talking, I don't miss some of the wilder stuff because I'm older. Um, it, it, but I used to very much enjoy. You never knew what was going to happen. You know what I mean? Like once I, you start drinking, I, where's this night going? Yeah. Now, nine times out of ten, it was going to go awry somewhere. But when you're young, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And then it started. You know, I would be drunk on set. You know, when I was working sometimes or hungover so badly that I would have to drink during the day. Uh, and then when, when that gets found out by some, especially if you're female, you're dead. Like that's, you can, you can be a male and do that, um, especially if you're a draw. Yeah. But uh, word gets around very quickly mm -hmm. if, you, if you're a female doing that. Because um, it's perceived as crazy as opposed to Jess. He likes to party. Um, but anyway, so in two, I quit in 2001, just stopped. Um, and then I started smoking a lot. For a while, and then I realized now this is becoming excessive, as much as I enjoy it. So I just stopped that after a terrible Bonnaroo experience, which we will not get into. Oh wow! I, I, I we will not get into I, it. I, Suffice I, it to say, you know, you talk about the camaraderie, and, and you know, I've mm -hmm. I have found since I've gone back mm -hmm. that uh, 
oh yeah, this is kind of a cool thing about it that you you know you just it's it, you know uh, I, 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 when I when I stopped it was like wow you know. I used to tell myself that it was a social thing and that I was, it was like mm -hmm. a thing to kind of help me be social. But after two, a year and a half without it, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I became very social. And then after mm -hmm. two years, I was like, this is, why did I wait so long to stop? Right. I'm more social now than mm -hmm. I've been ever in my life. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after six and a half years, things just, you know, I, I was like, well, you know, maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna start again for for one reason or another. It makes it easier to talk to people. I mean, it just there's no denying that a couple of drinks uh, make for a convivial atmosphere. Yeah. And especially if you go in alone, to, I used to enjoy that too. Uh, especially when I was traveling, uh, you go in, you can go in by yourself to a bar. After a couple, of, you have new friends. You know what I mean? Like you're just talking, or and you're yeah. having. Especially if it's the type of bar that's conducive right. to that. I'm not talking about big sports bars or something. Right. But like the local, wherever you are, there's something nice about it. And yeah. uh, what happened to me, though, is, is I have a problem with moderation. You know what I mean? Like it's every night was was to blackout status. And then, oh. you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Coming out of a blackout at 6 in the morning in Greenpoint. You know what I mean? Like this is before Greenpoint, you know, it was Greenpoint. This yeah. is back in the... When you before go, it was why a, am before I? Before it was a nice place before to wake up. Before it was a nice up. place to wake up. Or I'd be in somebody's apartment, strangers, total strangers, which of course they weren't strangers, I'm sure. When I was whatever, somehow yeah. we've gotten there. Or I, when I lived in LA, I would drive drunk uh, because you are forced to. <laughs> and I wouldn't even remember leaving a bar or anything, but my I was home, right? And yeah. I drove. I don't know where my car's parked, but my contact lenses are out and I've washed my face. It, it opens people up sexually, which was important to me when I was younger because I was in, inhibited in that, yeah. in that way, which, I, which is my nature to be inhibited in that way. Yeah. That's really, I really am not, I'm not into it. But when you're drunk, it's fine, right, to be, to be uninhibited sexually with your partner or a person you just met. You, you wake up in the morning with that, that, that abusive voice, yeah. you know. Self flag, flag, flagellating. I think. Self, self flag, whatever, you know, beating yourself up. Yes. And you, you, I think we were talking in the context of reading and why you read as much mm -hmm. as you do. And, uh, and, and, and I guess that's why maybe some people drink excessively mm -hmm. to, 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 to to, to quell the put, voices, yeah. Put out that chatter, you but know. But it's worse. I, I, I agree. That, well, in my case, anyway, uh, it would stop the voices temporarily. As soon as I got the buzz where I needed it, I felt very confident. And I didn't, I didn't uh, constantly second guess everything I was doing. Now, having said that, after a while, when you wake up in the morning, it's twice as bad. It's 70 times as bad. And you wake up feeling, oh, who do I owe a phone call to? Who do, who do I need to apologize to? Why am I covered in bruises? Who is that? It's just a, you know, constant, it's way worse. And then you drink again to get rid of that. And um, it's, it, my life is much better without it. Yeah. But I definitely had some very good times until it, it wasn't. <laughs>